Hallelujah. How many still believe he's still at work today? Thank you, Jesus. He's been so good to us. Hallelujah. As we already mentioned this morning, we need to keep Pastor and Sister Charles in our prayers, as well as Pastor Dudley. I still believe that God is a healer. I still believe that God works through humanity. I still believe that God's going to do a great work. Hallelujah. Praise his name. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise his name. Well, if we can go ahead and dismiss all the classes at this time. And everyone that's still here, it's Bible study. Hallelujah. Praise his name. So much to this topic here this morning. It's almost inexhaustible. So if I only get through half of it, I'll have another message to preach another time. Hallelujah. If we could start. In 1 Corinthians 14 and 22. Bible says, wherefore tongues are for a sign, not to them that believe, but to them that believe not. But prophesying serveth not for them that believe not, but them, but for them which believe. And one more scripture, and I'll let you guys have a seat. In 1 Corinthians 2 and 4. The Bible says, and my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and power, that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. And this morning, I want to teach on this subject matter. Why does God get a hold of your tongue? Can we lift up our hands in the sanctuary and begin to worship him? Thank you, Jesus. We're asking, Lord, for your wisdom to go forth in this place this morning. We're asking, Lord God, for you to touch every mind, every heart here today, Lord God, to open up the understanding, Lord God, that we may freely receive those things which are given to, you, to us, Lord God, by you. We ask in the name of Jesus Christ. And the church said, in Jesus' name. Oh, let's clap our hands unto the Lord one more time this morning. As I mentioned already, oh, can you have a seat? As I mentioned already, this subject matter, as I begin to, as I studied it out throughout the years, really, it becomes inexhaustible in the amount of material that you can uh, come up with um, in the Old Testament and the New. There's so much to this subject matter that you could preach on it from now till Jesus comes and you still not preach everything. The, the reason that God gets a hold of your tongue, hallelujah, and it's a question that um, a lot of new converts ask. Do I have to speak in tongues in order to be saved? I said, no, no. You get to speak in tongues. Hallelujah. You get to speak in tongues. Hallelujah. Because it's not just something, hallelujah, um, that just happens to you. It's a miraculous thing. It's a powerful thing. It's a life-changing thing. It's not just something that we take lightly. Amen. Praise his name. In 1 Corinthians 14 and 22, it begins to speak about the apostolic church. Hallelujah. When it begins to say that tongues are for a sign, not to them that believe, but to them that believe not. 
when an unbeliever comes into the church of the living God, hallelujah, the true church, that should be the sign that they're looking for. When you walk into a church service and it's dead as a doornail and you don't hear the sound of people speaking in other tongues, let me tell you, you're in the wrong place. You should be looking for a sign, hallelujah. There's always been a sign with every single one of God's covenants. God doesn't do anything without a sign. He doesn't want people just to believe just for the sake of believing, hallelujah. But he's going to give you a sign, hallelujah. In Noah's day, hallelujah, he gave them a sign of a rainbow. It was a visible sign. God wants there to be evidence of your faith, hallelujah. He wants it to be seen. Because that which is seen, that's the faith, hallelujah. Because you believed it, hallelujah, and it came to pass. But God doesn't. God doesn't operate just in easy believism. Well, I believed the Lord, but nothing happened. My life didn't change. I I left, I came here a smoker, and I left a smoker. Hallelujah. I came here a drug addict, and I left here a drug addict. I came here an alcoholic, and I left an alcoholic. God wants to do something to change your life. Hallelujah. In James 3, and it's a rather lengthy reading of the scriptures. It's James 3, 2 through 12. He begins to speak of this little red devil. Right there. This little red devil can get you into a lot of problems. Hallelujah. If you don't believe me, hallelujah. Well, I'll just keep that one to myself. Hallelujah. James 3, 2 through 12 says, For in many things we offend all. If any man offend not in word, the same is a perfect man. Now there is the written word, hallelujah, and there is the spoken word. In our day and age, The spoken word is becoming more and more prevalent and more and more powerful. Since the advent of radio, hallelujah, the spoken word has become more and more prevalent in our days. Now you can listen to things as you're walking around Walmart. You can listen to podcasts day and night while you're washing the dishes, hallelujah. You can, the spoken word has become powerful, hallelujah. But let me tell you, there's nothing more powerful than preaching, When you walk into an apostolic church and the word begins to go forth, hallelujah, preaching can save, hallelujah, but not just preaching any old thing, hallelujah. You got to preach the gospel. You got to preach how to be saved. You got to preach truth. Hallelujah. The written word, hallelujah, began really to be prevalent from the advent of language. When, when humanity began to first document history, praise God, the written language became more accessible and more accessible to more and more people in the mid-1500s at the advent of the printing press. The first book was the Bible, hallelujah. And let me tell you, every single book after that has been based on the Bible. They may not have the same subject matter, hallelujah, but they have the same format. Every, every idea, hallelujah, comes from a Bible base. And in the beginning, it was almost that way, hallelujah. But as, as we progress further down the line, things have become more perverted, hallelujah. You can't even hardly read a newspaper article without it having some bit of perverseness in it. The written word is powerful, That's why you ought to watch what you read. Hallelujah. You ought to watch the materials that you read. Hallelujah. Praise God. The same is a perfect man and able to bridle the whole body. Behold, we put bits in the horse's mouths that they may obey us, and we turn about their whole body. Behold, also the ships, which though they be so great and are driven of fierce winds, yet they are turned about with a very small helm, Whithsoever the governor listeth, even so the tongue is a little member and boasteth great things. Behold, how great a matter a little fire kindleth, 
and the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. So is the tongue among our members, that it defileth the whole body, and setteth on fire the course of nature, and is set on fire, on fire of hell. For every kind of beast, and of birds, and of serpents, and of things in the sea is tamed, and hath been tamed of mankind. But the tongue can no man tame. It is an unruly evil, full of deadly poison. Therefore, bless we God, even the Father, and therefore... Therewith curse we men, which are made after the similitude of God. Out of the same mouth proceedeth blessing and cursing. My brethren, these things ought not so to be. Does a fountain send forth at the same place sweet water and bitter? Can the fig tree, my brethren, bear olive berries, either a vine or figs? So can no fountain both yield salt water and fresh? The Bible begins to talk about how the tongue can defile the entire body. Let me tell you, that's why God has to get a hold of that little red devil. Hallelujah. He's got to get a hold of it. Hallelujah. Let me tell you, if the Spirit of God doesn't have a hold of your tongue, he doesn't have a hold of you at all. Hallelujah. If you can't rein that little red devil in, hallelujah, by the Spirit of God, hallelujah, you don't have the Spirit of God in you. Hallelujah. It's time. It's time to be refilled. Hallelujah. It's time. When they dig a well here in Kansas, hallelujah, it can either come out with salt water or fresh. It's, it's not both. There's potable water and there's non-potable water, hallelujah. And let me tell you, if, if you decide to dig a well on your property that has salt water, hallelujah, it's not something that you want to water your crops with either. It's just not. You can't have the same, you can't have Satan controlling a vessel and God at the same time. Hallelujah. It's one or the other. You have one of two masters. That's why it's time for some folks to switch masters. Hallelujah. It's time for the Holy Ghost to get a hold of some folks. Hallelujah. That's why he's got to get a hold of your tongue. Hallelujah. If you don't have the spirit of God, hallelujah, he needs to get a hold of your tongue. If you're still talking about somebody else, hallelujah, if you're still talking about your brother or sister, hallelujah, the Holy Ghost doesn't have a hold of your tongue. Let me tell you something else. If there's still sin in your life, hallelujah, the Holy Ghost doesn't have a hold of your tongue. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The tongue is a fountain. It's hooked up to a well. Hallelujah. That's your spirit. Whatever's in that, whatever's in that well, hallelujah, it's going to come out. It's going to make itself manifest. At some point or another, it's going to make itself manifest, whether it's in a text message that you're writing somebody or putting in a search bar somewhere, hallelujah, it's going to make itself manifest somewhere. Whatever's inside of that bucket, it's coming out in that Whatever's that well is coming out of that bucket. Hallelujah. That's why we should bless the Lord. Hallelujah. That's why we should bless the Lord at all times. Hallelujah. That there should be no guile in our mouth. Hallelujah. That he that loveth life. Hallelujah. Let him refrain his lips from evil. Hallelujah. Praise his name. You can't have good water and bitter water coming out of the same well. It's not possible. Hallelujah. That's why it's important for apostolic folks to get in the Holy Ghost every single day. Hallelujah. To approach life with a lot of carefulness. Hallelujah. That we should walk circumspectly, not as fools. Hallelujah. Not looking around at everybody else. Hallelujah. But looking at ourselves and you know what? Is, is my life good over here? Am I a perfect man over here in this aspect of my life? Am I a perfect man in this aspect in my life? Am I a perfect man in this aspect of my life? That you should walk around and say, you know what? I, I got some work to do at, at my job. Hallelujah. I haven't been talking to some people there right at my work. Hallelujah. Well, that's true anyways, whether you believe it or not. Hallelujah. There's a lot of Old Testament types and shadows, and that's what we're going to begin with here tonight. That's my precursor to the message. <laughs> Hallelujah. The first type I see of, of God getting a hold of a person's tongue is in 
the first man, Adam. The first language given to Adam, right? He was never taught a language. The Bible doesn't say that God set him down and said, now, Adam, this isn't, this isn't A, this is a B. This is, didn't teach him word building. That's what our, our kids are learning here at the apostolic school, hallelujah, is word building. It's, it's wonderful, hallelujah, when kids begin to learn how to read, hallelujah. Praise God. In Genesis 2, 18 and 19, the first instance of language says, And the Lord God said, It is not good that the man should be alone. I will make an help meet for him. And out of the ground the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every fowl of the air and brought them unto Adam to see what he would call them. And whatsoever Adam called every living creature, that was the name thereof. The first instance of, of language was dominion. When you put your name on something, when you put your name on a place, hallelujah, in, in, in the early Americas, hallelujah, people would found a city, hallelujah, they would call it something like Jamestown, hallelujah. They would put their name on it, hallelujah, saying, I'm taking dominion over this place, hallelujah. It's time for the apostolic church to put their name, hallelujah, to put the name of Jesus on Garden City, hallelujah, that we take dominion, hallelujah, over this place and say, you know what? This is God's city, hallelujah. It's not just garden city, it's God's city, hallelujah. The first instance, always dominion, hallelujah. You know why You know why Satan wanted to get in that garden and get into their minds and their thoughts, hallelujah? It's because he wanted what they had. He wanted that dominion, hallelujah. He wanted the dominion over the man, hallelujah. That way he could put his mark on the man and say, you know what? This man belongs to me, hallelujah. But let me tell you, the Bible says... That every soul belongs to him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The devil can't take. Hallelujah. What God already owns. Hallelujah. That's why the Bible doesn't say that we're going to stand before Satan at the, at the end times. Hallelujah. But we're going to stand before God. And all the books are going to be open. Hallelujah. And the words of our life are going to be written in these books. And we're going to stand before God. And our, and our lives better match up to what the word of God says. Hallelujah. When he looks at our lives, hallelujah, the Bible says that we are living epistles, hallelujah, written and known of all men. When you look at our lifestyle, hallelujah, people begin to be able to read it, hallelujah. People aren't fools, hallelujah. When you go out into the world, they can see what you are, hallelujah. They can see what kind of people you are. They can see what kind of words you use. If you're cussing and, and swearing, hallelujah, they say, that's, that's not what I see a Christian to be, hallelujah. But if your words are with meekness and with wisdom, hallelujah, of God's words, hallelujah, and if your lifestyle matches up with what the word of God says, and they see it in all manner of lifestyle and conversation, they're going to say, you know what? The God in you is true, hallelujah. Where do you go to church at? What's different about you, hallelujah? I've gone to churches all over this place, hallelujah, in city to city to city, hallelujah, and I've never seen anything as powerful as this. I've gone, to, I've gone to dead churches. I've gone to denominationalism, hallelujah, and they didn't have the power of God, hallelujah. They had some ooey-gooey feel-good stuff, hallelujah, but I left there in the same way that I came in. Why? 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 Because God couldn't get a hold of my tongue, hallelujah, because the truth wasn't preached. Praise God. And if I, if I miss some things in the Old Testament... You can come up and I'll add it to my notes later. <laughs> but I have a few examples here of, of an Old Testament type and shadow. Hallelujah. In, uh, in Exodus 4 and 10, bring up here on the board here. The Bible says, and Moses said unto the Lord, O my Lord, I am not eloquent neither heretofore nor since thou hast spoken unto thy servant, but I am slow of speech and of a slow tongue. In another translation, it says that I'm a stutterer. This is the first instance of God showing you that it doesn't matter your capabilities. Hallelujah. That we should wholly 
rest in him. Hallelujah. It's, just, it's not, not of man's wisdom. Hallelujah. But it's of the wisdom of God. Hallelujah. And, the, and then the Lord says unto him, who has made man's mouth or make, who make it the dumb or deaf or the seeing or the blind? Have, have not I the Lord? Now therefore go and I will be with thy mouth and teach thee what thou shalt say. In 2 Corinthians 12 and 9, this is a New Testament parallel. Hallelujah. It says, and he said unto me, my grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in my infirmities, in reproaches, in necessities, in persecutions, in distresses, for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then am I strong. God wanted to use this man's tongue, hallelujah, to teach us a lesson in the New Testament. When God gets a hold of your tongue, hallelujah, it's with stammering lips and another tongue, hallelujah. When Moses began to say, I'm a stammerer, hallelujah. I, I can't go before the, the Pharaoh. I can't go before the people and speak. God says, you know what? When you go forth, hallelujah, I'm going to be with you. I'm going to be words in your mouth because when in your infirmities, I am strong because you know you can't do it with your own capabilities, hallelujah. But when God goes with you, it's going to be made strong. When you're weak, he is strong. You can't do anything without the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. You can't. You can't even be a Christian without the Spirit of God. Because it's Christ in you, hallelujah, the hope of glory. You've got to have the spirit of God, hallelujah. When God gets a hold of your tongue, he doesn't want people to be ignorant, hallelujah. He wants them to know, hallelujah, of a surety that the spirit of God is resting within me. He doesn't want people to be ignorant. How does he do it? He's going to give you a sign. That way when... When mommy and daddy and uncle and auntie come up to you and say, you know what, uh, I, I got the Holy Ghost just like you. And you say, oh, you, you spake in other tongues? They're like, um, no, I believed on the Lord and I, I got the Holy Ghost. I'm, like, that is, that's the biggest tomfoolery that, I, that you, you can be bamboozled, hallelujah. You can be swindled out of salvation because... Somebody doesn't know the truth, hallelujah, or somebody doesn't preach the truth, hallelujah. hallelujah. They, they see it as, as compassion. Well, you don't, have to, you don't have to do that. It's okay if you don't speak in tongues, hallelujah. You, don't, you know, it's, it's just an added gift. It's just a spare tire. It's, a, it's something extra. Let me tell you, it's, it's not extra, hallelujah. It's essential to salvation, you must speak with other tongues. You must speak with other tongues. You must speak with other tongues. Hallelujah. As the Spirit of God gives the utterance. There's no other way. Hallelujah. There's no other plan for salvation. There's no other sign that God gives you. Hallelujah. You can be around places that there's miracles taking place. Hallelujah. But God didn't say that that was going to be the sign. Hallelujah. These signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils. They shall, they shall, they shall speak with new tongues. Hallelujah. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. When you receive the Holy Ghost, you will speak with other tongues. Hallelujah. In Isaiah 28 and 11, Isaiah begins to prophesy. Of the coming dispensation, for he said, For with stammering lips and in another tongue shall I speak unto this people. But he also begins to prophesy in, in Isaiah 33 and 19. Can we bring that up here on the board for me, please? 33 and 19. Thou shalt not see a fierce people. Thou shalt not see an angry people. Hallelujah. Thou shalt not see a people that are angry and mean all the time. Hallelujah. 
I've met some people out there in the world that seems like they, they wake up on the wrong side of, of the bed on purpose. Hallelujah. They say, you know what? I, I woke up. I'm going to have a bad day, and I'm going to make sure that everybody else has a bad day too. Hallelujah. Let me tell you, that's not a Christian. That's not a Christian attitude. That's not a Christian walk. Hallelujah. But you should get out of bed and say, I'm going to bless the Lord at all times. I'm going to wake up. I'm going to give somebody I'm going to give somebody a good day, hallelujah, and I'm going to give the devil a bad day because I'm taken from his kingdom. I'm going out. I'm going to be a witness. My lifestyle is going to reflect God. My speech is going to reflect God. In all manner of my lifestyle, it's going to reflect Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. A people of deeper speech than thou canst perceive, of a stammering tongue that thou canst not understand. Hallelujah. That's speaking in tongues, hallelujah. When you speak in tongues, you're not speaking unto your neighbor, hallelujah. You're not speaking to a guest in the building, hallelujah. You're not just, you're not just speaking to yourself, hallelujah. But it's the Spirit of God, hallelujah. It's the Spirit of God speaking through you to him, hallelujah. It's the Spirit of God making intercession on behalf of the saints, hallelujah. You don't know what you ought to pray for like you should, hallelujah. There's some things and there's needs in your life, hallelujah, that you know you need to pray for, hallelujah. But there's some folks, hallelujah, that we don't even know that we need to be praying for. God has a glorious church, hallelujah, and it's not just confined between these four walls, hallelujah. But let me tell you, it's a worldwide church, hallelujah. This, this gospel is going to be preached into all the world. Hallelujah. And then the end's going to come. Hallelujah. Let me tell you, it's going to go to every nation, every island. Hallelujah. Every people. Hallelujah. Every language of this earth is going to hear this gospel. Hallelujah. And you know what we can do? Hallelujah. We can give. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We can begin to give to missions, hallelujah. We can give of ourselves. We can give of our time, hallelujah. Say, so you know what? We can, we can give up an hour or two a day to pray, Hallelujah. We can say, I'm, I'm going to give up an hour of watching YouTube, hallelujah, and I'm going to get with it, and I'm going to pray. I can give up an hour of being on Facebook or Instagram, hallelujah, and I'm going to pray, hallelujah. A lot of missionaries, hallelujah, that's what they ask for. They ask for a lot of prayer, hallelujah. Let me tell you, they're facing a lot of opposition when you come into a new place, hallelujah, and people have never heard the gospel, hallelujah. These people have been under the dominion of Satan and, and his auspice for many, 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 many years. There's still an island that I was reading about the other day that, that no one's ever uh, tried to contact because everyone who's tried to get on the island, they have cannibalized. They're under the auspice of, of Satan. They're under his control. They're under his dominion. Hallelujah. But there ought to be a one God apostolic say, you know what, hallelujah, I'm setting foot, foot on this island, hallelujah, and I'm taking dominion, hallelujah, I'm taking dominion back. I'm putting the name of Jesus on this people, hallelujah. Praise God. This is the rest, hallelujah. When you begin to read, read about the day of rest that God created, the Sabbath, hallelujah, this is that rest, hallelujah. When you exit your works, hallelujah, which are, they may be, they may be good, hallelujah. You may, give, you may give to the poor, hallelujah. You may volunteer at a soup kitchen, hallelujah. And those are, those are good things, hallelujah. But it's not salvific. It's not going to make you, uh, it's not going to cause you to go to heaven. Some people think that God puts all your... Good works on a scale, hallelujah, and he measures against all the, the bad things you've done, against all your sins. And if you did one more good deed than bad deed, hallelujah, that you'd make it to heaven. But it's not that way. It's not that way. God had a plan, a salvation. The next instance I read is in Babel. The Bible says, and the whole earth was of one language and of one speech. And it came to pass as they journeyed from the east that they found a plain in the land of Shinar, and they dwelt there. And they said, one to another, let us go, go to, let us make brick and burn thoroughly. And they had brick for stone and slime they had for mortar. And they said, go to, let us 
build us a city and a tower whose top may reach unto heaven and let us make us a name. Hallelujah. They were trying to get to heaven with their own name. Hallelujah. They were trying to make a name for themselves. Hallelujah. They weren't searching after the name of God. Hallelujah. In the Old Testament, you begin to find prophet after prophet. Hallelujah. They searched after his name. Hallelujah. Jacob asked him, what is thy name? Hallelujah. And God said, why are you asking after my name, seeing that it's secret? Hallelujah. Let me tell you, it's not a secret any longer. Hallelujah. It's Jesus. We got to go into every place. Hallelujah. Every nation, every house here in Garden City and say, you know what? The name of God is Jesus. We got to make his, make his name glorious. Hallelujah. Praise his name. Hallelujah. And they knew what was going to happen to them because they knew what God had commanded them to do. He commanded them to, to go forth and subdue, hallelujah. But they gathered together in one place. And they knew that they were going to be scattered if, they didn't, if their plan of salvation didn't work. And that's exactly what came to pass. But let me tell you, it, the Bible says, And now nothing will be restrained from them which they have imagined to do. Because they were in one speech and one language. Now, in common vernacular, that would be the same language and the same dialect. Because you can speak the same language but not understand somebody who speaks the exact same language. Because when you go to Cuba, they speak Spanish, but it's a different Spanish. Hallelujah. You go to Spain, they speak Spanish, but it's a different Spanish. You go to Mexico, they speak Spanish, but it's a different Spanish. Hallelujah. But when, but when a group of people begin to speak the same language and the same dialect, hallelujah. Nothing's going to be restrained from what they can imagine to do, hallelujah. Let me tell you, the parallel is in the upper room experience. On the day of Pentecost, they were all in one accord. They were all in one place, hallelujah. And they begin to speak the same language, the same dialect. It was a language from heaven. And when you get the spirit of God within you, hallelujah, speak in this language, nothing's going to be restrained from what you can imagine to do. Because with God, all things are possible. But if you don't have God, you're without hope in this world. You got to have the spirit of God, hallelujah. You got to have the spirit of God. The reason God gets a hold of your tongue is because that, that tongue... It's by nature. It's set on fire of hell. That means it's set on course for hell. Hallelujah. You might want your, your life to be going in one direction. Hallelujah. But that tongue is going to take you to another direction. It's going to take you straight to the pits of hell. But let me tell you, if God can get a hold of your tongue, hallelujah, he can turn the whole body around. Hallelujah. Just like that great big ship. Hallelujah. If they would have got a hold of that helm of the Titanic, hallelujah, and said, we're not going that way, hallelujah, but we're going to turn this big old ship around. They're, it would have saved a lot of lives, hallelujah. It would have saved a lot of heartache. And let me tell you, if you can get a hold of your tongue, hallelujah, and let God get a hold of it, he can turn your whole life around. It doesn't matter how deep a depression that you're in. It doesn't matter what you've gotten, your, what situations you've gotten into, hallelujah. God can turn it all around, hallelujah. He can turn a marriage around. He's the God of all flesh, and he's the father of spirits. He can get a hold of your life and make it something beautiful. You don't have to live in sin and depression and doubt and fear. But God can get a hold of it, hallelujah. And you can begin to speak faith, hallelujah. As you begin to speak in tongues, hallelujah, you can begin to feel your faith filled, hallelujah. Building up that most holy faith. Pray in the Holy Ghost. When you begin to pray in the Holy Ghost, hallelujah, things begin to just fall off, hallelujah. You come up to an altar, hallelujah, full and heavy laden with, with burdens and sins, hallelujah. With the stresses of life, hallelujah. Even if you're a saint of God, been living for God for 20 years, you can begin to begin burdened down, hallelujah. But let me tell you, he's still the rest, hallelujah. He's still the rest, hallelujah. He's still the rest wherewith he shall cause the weary to be at rest, hallelujah. He's our Sabbath, hallelujah. When we come to church, when we come to the apostolic church, when we come to an altar, 
We begin to lay all those heavy burdens down, hallelujah. And we begin to feel the stresses of life begin to lift, hallelujah. And God begins to begin to take care of our problems in our life. He already knows what we have need of before we even ask, hallelujah. And we begin to lay them down and set them aside. You know what? It's more important me, for me to worship you, God. And as you worship him, hallelujah, and begin to press into the spirit, into another dimension, into another realm, hallelujah. Something, something miraculous begins to happen, hallelujah. You forget about the stresses of life. You forget about the things that are weighing us down. You forget about the financial struggles, hallelujah. And you begin to let God make a way, hallelujah. Praise his name. There's so many types to do with being born and being born again, hallelujah. But when you're, when you're born in the natural world, this baby comes out and it doesn't speak a language that anybody can understand, hallelujah. When a baby says, goo goo gaga, nobody, somebody interpret that for me. <laughs> There's no need for an interpreter, hallelujah, because no one understands, hallelujah, but let me tell you, there's a God who understands. There's a God who understands that language, hallelujah, just as well as there's a God who understands when we pray in tongues, hallelujah. He's got to get a hold of our tongue. He's got to get a hold of that tongue. Praise God. The power of choice is the next instance I find in the Old Testament. God gives, gives us a choice. We can yield our tongue to him, or we can yield it to our own desires, our own wants, our own needs, for your own purposes. He does, he's not going to make you, hallelujah. He's not going to make you yield that member to him. But let me tell you, it's a better choice to do that, hallelujah. That's why he gives that choice to you. You don't have to be lost forever, hallelujah, but you can wholly give yourself to God, hallelujah. That tongue is connected to your spirit, hallelujah. That's a well, hallelujah. Whatever's in that spirit is going to come out of that tongue. Hallelujah. But if you get the spirit of God inside that well, hallelujah, it's going to be like the next instance. The Bible says in Exodus 15 and 22, so Moses brought Israel from the Red Sea, and they went out into the wilderness of Shur, and they went three days into the wilderness and found no water. This is another instance where, where God is making a reference to the Spirit of God being like water. And they came to Merah. They could not drink of the waters of Merah, for they were bitter. This goes along with James 3, which we were reading earlier. And the kingdom of Merah, they could not drink of the waters of Merah, for they were bitter. Therefore, the name of it was called Merah, which means bitterness. And the people murmured against Moses, saying, What shall we drink? And he cried unto the Lord, and the Lord showed him a tree, which when he had cast into the waters, the waters were made sweet. Let me tell you. Before you get the Spirit of God, hallelujah, there's got to be a tree in your life, hallelujah. There's got to be a tree. There's got to be a cross, hallelujah. you got to come to repentance, hallelujah. you got to get all that bitterness out of that well, hallelujah. When you come to the cross of Jesus, hallelujah, and you cast it into the waters of your soul, hallelujah, it begins to make every bitter thing sweet. you got to have repentance, hallelujah. That's why even saints have to repent every single day. Hallelujah. That's why Paul said, I die daily. Hallelujah. I find a cross. Hallelujah. Daily. You got to take up your cross and follow him. There's got to be a cross. Hallelujah. And when this tree was cast into the waters, it made that, that water sweet. Hallelujah. It made it drinkable. Hallelujah. Let me tell you. When God begins to touch your soul, it makes every bitter thing sweet. Hallelujah. You may have walked around life thinking that everything smelled bad. Hallelujah. Because you had something on your upper lip. Hallelujah. Well, there's some people that walk around in life like that. Like, man, 
It stinks in here. That stinks. Man, you stink. I don't like you. But let me tell you, if, if that person would come in here and taste what we have tasted, hallelujah, if they would taste and see that the Lord is good, hallelujah, if they would taste and see of his goodness and his mercy, hallelujah, they would begin to act like us, hallelujah, say, you know what? This is good. This is good. Hallelujah. This is a better life. Hallelujah. I don't have to live in sin. I don't have to live in my yesterdays. I don't have to live in my mistakes any longer. I got rid of them at the foot of Jesus. Hallelujah. I got rid of them at the cross. Hallelujah. I let that cross rule my life. Hallelujah. I let that cross go into the waters of my soul. Hallelujah. And make them sweet. Man. Makes me want to preach to some Sour folks, hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God. Oh, hallelujah. Proverbs 27, 7 says, The full soul loatheth in honeycomb. The full soul loatheth in honeycomb. Imagine being so full of sin and iniquity and, and the pleasures of life that even a honeycomb seems like it's bitter. So you're like, I don't, I don't want that. That's, that's not for me. I mean, but let me tell you, when God gets a hold of that tongue, hallelujah, in, on your tongue, it's going to be sweet, hallelujah. It's going to be sweet on your tongue, hallelujah. It might bring conviction to your stomach, hallelujah. That's why it says it'll make their, their bellies bitter, hallelujah. But it's going to... It's going to bring forth life, hallelujah, when it's sweet on your tongue, hallelujah. When you get the Holy Ghost, it's a sweet experience. It's an awesome experience. You're going to look back to that day, every day of your life, and you're going to say, something amazing happened here, hallelujah. You can go to that spot on the altar and say, this is where I received the Holy Ghost. It's going to become a memorial in your life. Praise God. why I, I like Nestle Pure Life <laughs> with some sweet water. <laughs> but to the hungry soul, every bitter thing is sweet. There's some people that they're full of, of the things of life, hallelujah, and they're hard, hard to reach. But Matthew 5 and 6 says, blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. What are they going to be filled with, Brother Nick? Hallelujah. The Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. And when you hunger and thirst after righteousness, hallelujah, you begin to hunger and thirst after the right things. Hallelujah. You begin to hunger after God. Hallelujah. And what are you going to get when you hunger after God? Hallelujah. He's not going to give you a snake or a scorpion. Hallelujah. He's not going to give you another little red devil. Hallelujah. But he's going to get a hold of that little member. He's going to get a hold of your tongue. And when you hunger after God, you're going to get God. <laughs> Proverbs 21 and 21 says, He that followeth after righteousness and mercy findeth life, righteousness and honor. You're going to find life, hallelujah. You're going to find life more abundantly. You might live to be 120 years old on this earth, hallelujah. But at the end of the life, if you go to hell, hallelujah, you lost it all, hallelujah. But if you get a hold of, of God, hallelujah, if you get a hold of righteousness, hallelujah, you're going to find life and that more abundantly. Hallelujah. You got to hunger and thirst after the right things. Praise God. Ezekiel 36 and 26. A new heart also will I give you, and a new spirit will I put within you. And I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh, and I will give you a heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes. And you shall keep my judgments and do them. And you shall dwell in the land which I gave to your fathers. And you shall be my people. And I will be your God. He begins to prophesy of a New Testament experience. 
an experience that he would never experience himself. Hallelujah. But he began to prophesy of it in the future of hand. Hallelujah. God's going to give you a new heart and a new spirit. Hallelujah. And you're not going to want to want the things of the world like you want it any longer. Hallelujah. But you're going you're gonna to hunger and thirst after the things of God. Hallelujah. It's, it's a, an amazing experience. I can't even begin to explain to you what it was like. Hallelujah. It's like one day you love Mexican food. Hallelujah. And the next day you hate Mexican food. Hallelujah. It's a, it's a complete change in lifestyle. Now, I love Mexican food, hallelujah. I loved it before I got the Holy Ghost, and I, I really love it now that I do have the Holy Ghost, hallelujah. But it's a complete change in life. As, as a sinner, you do the things of the world. You go to the places they go, you experience the thing. You worship the way they worship when they worship in, in the stadiums and in their ball games, hallelujah. They worship the, the, the mundane, hallelujah. They look to the movie stars of this world as an example, and that's the way they begin to live their lives. That's why America is in such shambles today, hallelujah. That's why uh, the, the, the nuclear family, family is in such shambles today, hallelujah, because they look at the examples of Hollywood, and, and they go from, some, from wife to wife to wife to wife to husband to husband to husband, and then all of a sudden, after they've had 18 wives and whatever, then they've, they decide that they're homosexual, and then they live in a, a confused, messed up world, hallelujah, but when you have and the examples of the church, hallelujah, of one man and one woman, hallelujah, and one family, hallelujah, and strong family bonds, hallelujah, because they're tied together with God, hallelujah. They're anchored in the right place. They're anchored in the word of God. They're anchored in truth. Hallelujah. Praise God. In John 14 and 16. Jesus began to talk about this experience that everyone in the New Testament would experience. He says, I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever, even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. What he's saying is that I'm right here with you, and I'm going to be in you. Hallelujah. He's not going to leave you clueless. That's not the way he operates. But he said, at that day, you shall know that I am in my Father, and ye in me, and I in you. You're going to know, hallelujah. You're not just going to think, hallelujah, that you're saved just because somebody says, believe in your heart, and you're going to be saved, hallelujah. But you're going to know, hallelujah. How are you going to know? You're going to speak with other tongues. God's going to get a hold of that member, hallelujah. And you're going to speak in new tongues. And then you're going to continue in that lifestyle. You're going to continue in righteousness. If you go back out in the world, hallelujah, he's not going to be with you, hallelujah. You've got to follow after him. You've got to walk after the spirit. You've got to walk after God. You can't just walk in whatever direction that you want to. You've got to follow after him. Follow after righteousness. You've got to follow in holiness in all manner of lifestyle. That's why charismatic Catholics aren't saved, hallelujah. They might have the Holy Ghost. That's why... Uh, religious people that, that have received the baptism of the Holy Ghost, they're not going to be saved. Hallelujah. The Bible in the Old Testament says that, that they have hewn themselves out cisterns, broken cisterns that can hold no water. It don't matter how much Holy Ghost you pour into a, a broken pot. Hallelujah. You can keep pouring it in there. Hallelujah. It's never going to be filled. When I came in here this morning to fill the baptismal tank, hallelujah, uh, I, I turned on the water, hallelujah, and it wasn't filling up. And so I'm like, okay, there's something wrong with this plug. And I messed with it for about 20 minutes before I got it to be able to, to turn and, and 
make a complete seal. Hallelujah. The Bible says that ye are sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. Hallelujah. It doesn't matter how broken that your life was. Hallelujah. If you're sealed with the Holy Ghost, hallelujah, it's going to be preserved. Hallelujah. Just like the waters weren't going to stay in that baptism until it had a, a complete seal. Hallelujah. When it was sealed, hallelujah, I can feel it all the way up to the top. And let me tell you, if you're full of the Holy Ghost, hallelujah, and you begin to pour more water into the vessel, it's going gonna, it's gonna to spill out. Hallelujah. That's why out of your bellies shall flow, flow, flow rivers of living waters. Hallelujah. Second Corinthians 6.16 is a reiter reiteration of Ezekiel 36 and 26. And what agreement had the temple of God with idols? It doesn't have any. Hallelujah. I told a young man here the other day, you got some stuff in your house you need to get rid of. You have some idols that you need to get rid of. You got some witchcraft that you need to get rid of. Hallelujah. Because the Spirit of God doesn't have any agreement with those. Hallelujah. You got to get rid of it. Hallelujah. You got to fully repent. Hallelujah. You can't walk around in sin and expect God to give you His Spirit. Hallelujah. But you got to get rid of it. There's some stuff you got to lay down at this altar. You got to lay down lying. You got to lay down stealing. You got to lay down adultery and fornication. Because God doesn't have an agreement with him. He's not saying, hey, there's some pastors that will, will tell you, hey, hey, it, it's, it's okay. It's okay, brother. You, you can sin just a little bit every single day, and it's all right. God's, God's all right with that, you know. We're all sinners. We've all fallen short of the glory of God. Hell. But let me tell you, the power of the Holy Ghost, if you walk after the Spirit of God and not after the flesh, hallelujah, He'll make it possible, hallelujah. He'll make it possible to live above sin, hallelujah. To put, this, put the devil underneath of your feet, hallelujah. To get dominion back from him, hallelujah. That's the whole reason that he gives us language, hallelujah. Say, devil, get under my feet, hallelujah. Devil, get thee behind me. Get out of my thoughts, hallelujah. Get out of my car, hallelujah. Hallelujah. For ye are the temple of the living God. Hallelujah. If you're the temple of God, hallelujah. Don't you think that place ought to be a clean place for him to dwell? It ought to be a clean place for him to dwell. He says, I will be their God and they shall be my people. Wherefore, come out from among them and be ye separate, saith the Lord. And touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. And I will be a father unto you, and ye shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. We can't be of our own works. Because if it was our, of our own works, we would have some reason to boast. Hallelujah. But when it's the Spirit of God that does all the works, hallelujah, we can have our boast in Him. The reason we speak in tongues, hallelujah, because we didn't have control of our life. We didn't have control of the circumstances in our life. We didn't have control of our, even our eternal destiny until God got a hold of our tongues. We were on a course for hell, and we, were, we didn't even know that we were going there. But when God, when God gets a hold of our tongues, it begins to do something, hallelujah. It begins to take control out of our lives. And when God gets a hold of your life, hallelujah, he can make it into something beautiful. Turns trash into treasure, hallelujah. The world has a way of using you and throwing you away, hallelujah. But God looks at your life and says, you know what? I can make something beautiful if I can just get a hold of the tongue. Can you all lift our hands in this place here this morning?
There's got to be a hunger and a thirst. There's got to be a hunger and a thirst after God. There's got to be a hunger and thirst after righteousness. Sometimes you need to bring the cross of Jesus back into your life. Hallelujah. If there's bitterness in your heart or soul, hallelujah. If there's hatred or variance, hallelujah. You got to bring that cross back into your life. Hallelujah. Say, God, you got to make these bitter waters sweet. You got to take all this pain and hurt and bitterness away, Lord God. Give me a reason to live again, Lord God. In John 7 and 37, it says, In the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. He that believeth on me, as the Scriptures has said, out of his belly, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. But this spake he of the Spirit, which they that believe on him should receive. For the Holy Ghost was not yet given. But let me tell you, the Holy Ghost is given. The Holy Ghost is flowing in this place today. If you reach out to him, hallelujah. If you allow the cross of Jesus to do a work in your life, hallelujah. He'll fill you with his spirit. Oh, hallelujah. Why don't we reach out to him and begin to worship God. Jesus. Lord God, we need your spirit to do a work in our lives, oh God. We need you, Lord. Minister unto us here this morning, oh God. Change us, Lord God. Make us more like you. Help us, Lord God, in our day-to-day lives to do, Lord God, that which is your blessed will. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. Why don't we lift up our voices unto the Lord here tonight?